You know, in this last panel, you started to hear the vibe about the extended day ahead market, and they talked a little bit more about the governance structure. And so for this next segment, we're going to delve into the topic of governance, followed by a conversation with policymakers from across the West. All right, so to start this next conversation, I'm really pleased to introduce ISO Board Governor Angelina Galitova and Western Energy Imbalance Market member John Prescott. Governor Galitova has been a long-standing member of the ISO Board, serving since 2011. Ms. Galitova is currently the president of NEO Options, a renewable energy and new technology development firm. She has extensive industry experience. I think many of you know her quite well. She's one of the most passionate individuals that I know who is dedicated to advancing renewable energy and distributed energy technologies, not just nationwide, but worldwide. Member Prescott has been a member of the governing body since 2016 and an avid supporter of the Western energy imbalance market. Mr. Prescott has had an exemplary career, retiring as CEO of Pacific Northwest Generating Cooperative and is well known as a leader in the utility sector. He brings a great deal of expertise and leadership to his role on the governing body. Both Angelina and John would like to share their perspective on governance with all of you. So thank you both for joining us. Please give Angelina and John a round of applause. Thank you so much, Joanne. Can everyone hear me okay? All right, great. Thank you for joining us. It's so nice to be together after four years in absentia and going through COVID and all the changes. And I'm especially happy to be joined here by my good friend, John Prescott to talk about governance and especially joint authority. So governance and joint authority is actually a terrific example of the evolution of markets and the governance frameworks around them. In November of 2014, the Kaiso launched what was going to become the very successful energy imbalance market, which now covers over 80% of the West and has resulted in what Elliot pointed out today was $3 billion in benefits to all stakeholders. This success is largely due to the governance structure recommended by the Transitional Committee that established the EIM governing body to better represent the growing footprint of the West. As the markets evolved and the EIM succeeded, governance did not remain static. Initially, the governing body and the Board of Governance met separately. We had very little opportunity for interaction or even getting to know each other. In 2021, the GRC recommended several enhancements to the governance structure, including joint authority. The two bodies have continued to work much more closely together since then under the joint authority framework. We hold general and executive meetings together and jointly discuss issues relevant to the EIM, as well as vote on any tariff amendments covered by joint authority together. Our collaboration, partnership and trust has grown even more so during COVID and we work very effectively as a team. Many of us hadn't even met face to face until very, very recently. We continue to look for opportunities for closer collaboration when we work jointly to appoint members of the Market Surveillance Committee and an EIM governing body representative attends and participates in all Department of Market Monitoring Committee meetings and oversight, which has also deepened our collaboration, trust, and partnership. We look forward to working even more closely under the extended day ahead market structure and beyond as we continue to build trust, collaboration, market integration, and optimize operations across the West. So it's really great to have this opportunity to work with you, John. Well, thank you, Angelina. I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, just for the record, I'm not using the confidence monitor, so I'll probably <laughs> lack confidence in my presentation. So. But I do have notes, old-fashioned notes right here. How do I? Uh, and, and I'm going to build on what you heard from Angelina. I was fortunate enough to be one of the first governing body members appointed back in July of 2016. And so I've seen a lot of the transition and a lot of the improvements to governance over that time. So that makes me, number one, old. And number two, I, I guess I would be the, the governance historian. 
because I had an opportunity to experience where we started, which was uh, using a primary authority model. Now that model came about because of the charter that we operate under. And that charter is an amazing document and it was created through the brain trust known as the Transitional Committee. If there's anybody out there that has served on the Transitional Committee, raise your hand. There should be a lot. There should be a lot. So <laughs> Where are they? I, maybe I am old, okay? Maybe. <laughs> but I, I wanted to give a shout out because they took a very complex problem of how we would apply governance to this new market under the auspices of the California ISO. And they came up with this charter that included primary authority. One of the very, very clever things they did is within the charter, they put uh, a section in there on governance review, which required at a certain time, we would look at how effective we were under governance and how the market has changed and recommend changes to the governance structure. So that formed, as Angelina said, the Governance Review Committee was stood up in late 2020, early 21, and told they had just a few months to work on this project to come up with new governance recommendations for the governing body. Well, a year later, still working on it, they did come up with some pretty fantastic changes which were given to the governing body and the Board of Governors to approve in late 21. And that's the joint authority under which we operate today. And by the way, I, I think a shout out to the Board of Governors because this is a committee that operates under the Board of Governors, but they allowed the governing body to have a joint authority over the recommendations. So the governing body had a chance to approve these recommendations as well. So here we are today, we're operating under joint authority. Uh, we made our first decision, I think in December of 21, operating jointly. And my perspective, as Angelina has pointed out, it's brought a, a lot more closeness in thought and de deliberations with the Board of Governors and the governing body. We make our decisions publicly in a joint meeting, which means we get to hear the perspectives from all of us, from, from the, the 10 of us together, plus the presenters, to come up with what I think are better decisions when we work together. And those decisions are established to benefit the entire market and the market footprint. And, and that's the thinking behind joint authority. And I think it's worked very well. Now, we fast forward to kind of where we're headed. It looks like a day ahead market is gonna happen. And the question comes up, should the governing body have any authority over the day ahead market? So the governance review committee, which I mentioned earlier that had a one or two month assignment is now in its second year working on another iteration of improvements to our governance. They released the latest draft on Halloween, uh, which I hope any interested party would look at and give us comments on, uh, as we're still taking comments. Angelina and I both serve uh, on a non-voting role in that committee. But we're excited to see where that ends up. The idea is that would be in parallel with the EDAM market rules, would go to the governing body and board of governors jointly, probably early next year for our approval. And to me, it points us in the right direction to continually improve our governance. And as we head towards what uh, I think is needed in the region, the RTO, you really need independent governance. And these have been incremental steps to get us there. And I think it's, it's provided the region with tremendous benefits. Angelina? Thank you, John. This is terrific. Yes, governance is evolutionary. And as the markets evolve and as we continue forward towards the day ahead market, day ahead market plus, even an RTO possibly into the future, we'll be working even more closely together and there'll be a greater role for the governance review committee to hopefully play. So it's my great pleasure now to introduce Rebecca Wagner. Rebecca Wagner, probably most of you do know her, she holds the superhero status as the greatest ISO volunteer of all time. <laughs> Rebecca has over 25 years of energy industry experience. She is a former Nevada PUC commissioner. She is the former chair of the transitional committee that was so genius in forming okay. our governance. And she's the current vice chair of the governance review committee. In her day job, she's a consultant working on regional markets, clean energy, and climate. Both John and I wanted to join Rebecca here today. We wanted to welcome her so we could all pay tribute to Therese Hampton, who was the chair of the GRC, who we lost in a very, very tragic accident recently. Therese was a great energy leader, 
colleague and friend, and we will miss and cherish her memory forever. Welcome, Rebecca. Thank you, Angelina, and, and thank you, John. I want to just turn now to honor our, our good friend and colleague, Therese Hampton, as, as you've heard. We lost her at the end of September, and it's, it's, it's a loss that it, I feel, well, almost daily, especially with um, having to step into her role. Um, but a little bit about Therese. She's been a fixture um, on the regional market scene for several years. She was the executive director of the public generating pool in Oregon in the Northwest. She chaired the Regional Issues Forum, and most recently she's been chairing the uh, Governance Review Committee. And as her vice chair, I just got to show up to meetings because she did all the hard work. Um, just a little bit about her leadership style. She's, I, I'm just struggling with using past tense, so forgive me on my, um, my fluctuating grammar, but um, she was this extraordinary leader. She was smart, she was strategic, thoughtful, and, and most of all, patient. Um, I've been having to up my patience game um, as I've been filling in. And I think most of all, what, I, what captures the essence of Therese is her sense of humor and in bringing fun to a really dull, boring topic. Um, she, she made our meetings bearable, enjoyable. Um, everything we did was um, online. Um, so our virtual Zoom meetings for three hours starting early in the morning, you know, one would think that that would be horribly painful, but she infused it with her humor and, and her enthusiasm that was contagious even at, you know, hour two, Two, two hours and 54 minutes into a meeting, and we still had to cover schedules. Uh, and I think most of all, um, as we uh, see the picture of Therese, it, you see the beautiful smile, and it was matched with this amazing laugh. And as I look at her right now, um, it, it, it gives me strength and happiness thinking about that laugh. So as all of you endure the stakeholder process when you're down grinding it out, getting your comments in on market design and governance, um, and you think, what am I doing? Um, take a step back, take a breath. If you knew Therese, think about Therese. Um, for those of you who didn't think about there was this extraordinary woman that really led the charge and hope that we all can be a little bit more like Therese. Um, as we go forward in, in, in our endeavors on governance and the next evolution of EDAM and RTO beyond. So with that, we'll begin our session with a group of regulators from around the West.